Hi everyone, I hope you're all well. The Australian election result is being characterised as a sort of Trump and Brexit-esque style victory. Just like with Trump and with Brexit, all the polls in Australia were wrong. While most predicted a resounding Labour victory, the exact opposite happened and Prime Minister Scott Morrison's Liberal Party, which is our Conservative Party by the way, ended up taking the top spot. In other words, despite a popular zeitgeist predicting one thing, the opposite happened. Now, the key factor in all three of these cases is that generally, where a left-wing cause was predicted to win, the right-wing cause actually made it over the finish line first. And again, in all three cases, it sent the left ballistic. But before I tell you just how ballistic they went, pretty please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I would love to hit 100,000 subscribers by June. So if you like my videos and you watch them regularly but you haven't subscribed yet, I would really, really love it if you hit that subscribe button right now. Okay, here we go. Rather than self-reflecting on why possibly they got it so wrong, the various opposing camps to Trump, Brexit and Scott Morrison did their usual thing of blaming everything and everyone except themselves. All three causes created a primary furphy to lump all of their frustration on as a kind of scapegoat. With Trump, it was Russian collusion. Russians hacked the election. That's the only reason Hillary Clinton lost. With Brexit, it was racist baby boomers. Baby boomers are racist, that's why they voted yes. And in the Australian federal election, it's the Murdoch press. Rupert Murdoch created a media scare campaign against Labour, that's why they lost. Now, obviously, in all three of those cases, none of those assertions are accurate. As has been revealed by the Mueller report, Trump did not, in fact, collude with the Russians to steal the election, and the Democrats were exposed for having pushed the biggest conspiracy theory of the last 100 years. And as for Brexit, yes, it was the baby boomers who got the yes vote over the line, but it wasn't because they're racist. It's because, unlike whingy millennials who just wanted their free travel across Europe, boomers have lived through the full history of the EU and based on their observation and extensive experience, you know, living in it, they have decided it doesn't work. As for Australia, well, that needs some context. Rupert Murdoch is an Australian media mogul who owns a very large chunk of media outlets worldwide. Now, because he is a known conservative, the lefty lovies decided long ago that that means every single journalist and commentator working for his publications all have exactly the same right-wing opinions as he does and are influenced by his allegedly omnipotent presence to say and write whatever he tells them to. See how silly this sounds already? Now, I actually work for the Murdoch Press, I even have my own security pass, and I can assure you that dear Rupert does not, in fact, sit next to me while I'm on TV whispering what I should say in my ear as I give an opinion. And sure, while some of Murdoch's outlets do have a distinctly and unashamedly conservative slant on things, there is plenty of left-wing pushback, generally from media outlets owned by Fairfax, which has a particular slant that tends to be the opposite to that of Murdoch. Look at it this way. There is a difference between who owns a news outlet and who is on the board versus who is in the editorial department. So while the board of a news outlet might be made up of people who lean a certain way, that doesn't mean that the content creators are going to do the same. Bottom line, most journalists are left wing and that's just reality and it's a global thing. For example, according to Politico, as of 2013, only 7% of US journalists identified as a Republican. Not only that, during 2016 in the Trump election saga, 72% of newspaper and online employees worked in counties where Hillary Clinton won, and 51% of them worked in counties where she won by 30 points or more. Similar is true in Australia. According to a survey of 605 journalists conducted by the University of the Sunshine Coast in 2013, just over half of them described themselves as having left-wing political views, while only 13% said they were right of centre. And yes, while that study is disputed by some, given the small sample size, we'll just think of it like this. Journalists nowadays are expected to have some sort of tertiary qualification, so of course most of them will go through the heavily left-leaning halls of university humanities departments for three or four years. 
Also, as we've seen, most media jobs cluster in the cities, which are traditionally quite sort of trendy, progressive hubs. I mean, take the city of Melbourne, where a lot of media outlets in Australia operate from. That's about 70% not even Labor, but Greens, if that's any ideological indication. So it is very clear that your average journo is subject to far more left-leaning influence in their work than right-leaning. I mean, for the best example of this, just look at The Guardian. Nevertheless, your average Aussie lefty is still very, very miffed about Uncle Rupert allegedly stealing the election from Labour. Now, I'd say there are three reasons why they insist the media is biased against them. One, because that's what the Labour Party is currently telling them is the case. There was a scare campaign, as I said, in response to Alan that found fertile ground. I think it was dishonest, but it was also successful. Um, we had very... Oh, your policies, Jim. We had I was very... only quoting your policies. That's all I was doing. Yeah, we had a very um, sustained um, campaign, personal campaign, uh, against our leader, Bill Shorten. Uh, we had Clive Palmer, who made what was effectively a $60 million donation to the Liberal Party by running wall-to-wall -wall ads okay, bashing we're the Labor We're going to come to that. So there are lots of reasons. We're, we're... Two, they have a problem with self-reflection because they are so sure that they are correct about everything. ...for Hamish in the long course, and I know I saw Hoppy down there. So great to have you here, Hoppy. Very emotional today, but it's a great... Just... And three... They are so far to the left that they think anything to the right of Bernie is a conservative opinion. Right, comrades? What these unhappy Labour and Green supporters are also forgetting is the presence of the online media. News sources such as your daily paper and cable TV are nowadays not the only news sources around, not by a long shot. There is plenty of counterpoint for conservative views that are very, very noisy and wide in circulation. Outlets like BuzzFeed, Vox, Vice, HuffPost, The Daily Beast, etc. have a nauseatingly progressive agenda and get bounced around and around on social media sites like Facebook and Twitter for unassuming viewers to pick up. Which leads to the third prong in the circulation of left-wing opinion. It is an indisputable reality that Silicon Valley big tech has a ragingly left-wing political bias. Even Zuckerberg admits it. I understand where that concern is coming from because Facebook and the tech industry are located in Silicon Valley, which is an extremely left-leaning place. Jack Dorsey, the CEO of Twitter, made a similar admission about his company. We have a lot of conservative-leaning folks in the company as well, and to be honest, they don't feel safe to express their opinions at the company. They do feel silenced by just the general swirl of what they perceive to be the broader percentage of leanings within the company. And I don't think that's fair or right. Because of this, you know exactly what types of news and information and commentary are likely going to be promoted on social media platforms, and also what is more likely to be banned. Now, this is not even necessarily done deliberately or maliciously. It is probably due to the fact that these major social media sites have so many non-conservatives working on staff that they simply have no objective frame of reference when it comes to the news. So what is in reality very mainstream center-right opinion, to them it may seem like crazy easy far-right propaganda that must be banned or squashed by the algorithm for the good of civilization. So, no, sorry, but the entirety of the media is actually not out to get left-wing political causes or parties. In fact, it's quite the opposite. There is plenty of pro-labor, pro-green, pro-left-wing commentary out there, and combined with the online media and social media situation, it actually has more of a role in dictating what is and isn't acceptable public dialogue than conservative media does. And as we have seen countless times, anybody who publicly strays outside of that regressive leftist acceptable public dialogue window gets smeared as a racist, sexist, bigoted, homophobic, xenophobic, or whatever, simply for daring to suggest such outrageous things as perhaps the gender pay gap isn't real. Because of the noisy, aggressive state of the left-wing mass media, along with the credence that Twitter is given as apparently reflecting what the general public thinks, it is very, very easy for those within that bubble to assume that this is, in fact, the zeitgeist. After all, my experience of trendy regressive leftists is that they will proudly own up to not seeking out conservative opinion because why on earth would anyone want to look at that white supremacist propaganda? 
I think that there's a lot of people more concerned about being precisely, factually, and semantically correct than about being morally right. Add to that what the polls have been doing over the last few years in terms of predicting one thing but getting another, and you have the perfect storm of what is and isn't safe to publicly discuss. But as we have seen from the recent election results in Australia, and of course also Trump and Brexit, the regressive progressives at the forefront of the media and the online sphere, yes, they may be noisy and their adherents prolific in their approval, but there actually aren't that many of them. There are many, many more so-called shy Tories out there than progressive activists, and let me tell you, just take Twitter for example. So much stock is given to what happens on Twitter by journalists nowadays, it's unbelievable. I mean, how many articles from sources like BuzzFeed and Vox etc use tweets as evidence of what people are apparently saying about things? In the old days, journalists would have to get out of the office and hit the pavement in order to ascertain what they thought was general public opinion, but now they don't even have to leave their desks. Boy, this is the life, huh guys? We finally did it! But here's the thing. Hardly anybody is actually on Twitter. Take Australia. According to the Yellow Pages social media report in 2018, 88% of the population in Australia are social media users. And while Facebook is the dominant platform with 91% of social media users utilizing the website, only 19% of the 88% use Twitter. That's it. Twitter not only ranks well below Facebook, but also below Snapchat, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, and even Pinterest. And yet, for some reason, journalists and indeed politicians are continually fooled by the noisy minority of raging progressives on Twitter. I mean, certainly the Labour Party capitulated to them. Rather than sticking to their traditional and very effective mantra of being for the workers, they base their entire agenda around a trendy climate change plan which, yes, while appealing to inner city latte sippers, spelled disaster for the workers, especially in the regions, because it posed an existential threat to their jobs. So, needless to say, by kowtowing to the demands of the flagrant Twitterati and dismissing anyone who disagreed with them as unenlightened conspiracy theorists who didn't care about their children's future, Labour completely shot themselves in the foot with the workers, as you can see by the loss of support for Labour in regional working class areas. The reason Labour lost this election isn't because of a scare campaign by the Murdoch press. Just like Brexit wasn't voted in wholly by a racist demographic and just like Donald Trump didn't win because of Russian collusion. In all three cases, the left side of politics lost because, among other things, the modern left is insufferable. A far cry from the working class heroes of old, the modern left turns its nose up at anyone outside their university educated city dwelling hub and dismisses them as ignorant, uneducated rednecks who need to be told what to think by an intellectually superior, moral, enlightened class. And people are sick of it. They are sick of being talked down to. So to say Labour lost the Australian election because of a vast right-wing Murdoch-led conspiracy to bring down the Labour Party is, I'm sorry, just patently ridiculous. The Australian Labour Party, and indeed the modern left around the world, simply has to stop blaming external factors for these repeated losses and look at themselves. They didn't learn their lesson after Brexit or Trump, but perhaps this latest result in Australia may finally give them some pause for thought. If you liked that video, please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave me a comment, and if you really, really liked it, then check out the video description for my subscribe star link and other ways you can support me.